Bless the Lord. We're continuing in our series, Take New Ground in Our Relationships. Hey, Sister Chansey, look who there. Stand up and let me give you a hand. Bless the Lord. She there, she there. Amen. Hey, look the bone. Stand up. Tell the devil he's a liar. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Taking new ground in relationships. And so we thank God. We said the last time that we showed from the word of God the two most important things is to what? Love God and what? Love people. Love God and love people. That's the two most important things. And I heard a little child talking, oh God, it's so good to hear children in church again. Bless the Lord. You're coming time. We're talking to children today. And so we're continuing in our series. We spoke to married people uh, last week. And look at a married person and say, did you take any new ground? Master Gilly, I have nobody to look at up here. Look for that feel. We had to pray. Amen. We also spoke to the singles and we share what God is saying. I want us to turn today to the word of God and we're reading from Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 to 4 and I will ask uh, the lovely sister Marcia Messiah to come read for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 to 4. Children, obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Father, we praise and we thank you today for your word. Your word is already blessed. And so we pray today for the hearers of your word, that God, they will receive your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray against all the elements that would want to disrupt, slow down, distort, and confuse your word. We pray that your word will go with clarity and that the Holy Spirit will cause it, dear God, to minister to hearts, come against every force and trick of the enemy. That God, your word will be received today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God wants healthy relationships. And so we continue looking at that. How many of you today want a long and enjoyable life? Yeah? Well, you know, the Bible gives the recipe for that. How to have a long, how to live long and enjoyable. And anytime somebody tells me, live long, I always push in the other part and prosper. Because you know, Pastor, don't want to live long and catch me in end. So whenever you tell me, live long, throw in the little and prosper. Amen? And God has given us how we can do that and live an enjoyable life. And so today we want to look at what God has said as his formula, his recipe for being able to do that. And we are today, as we focus on Ephesians, and in the last time in Ephesians, we looked at the married and the singles. Ephesians now gives to us the recipe for the long life uh, by speaking to children. So turn to one and say, he's speaking to children today. We have some children's in the house. And the Bible, uh, Sister Messiah read, talks about uh, children... 
obey your parents. And when we say that, we want to ensure we understand what the Bible is saying. Now, the Bible, as you know, was written in Greek because the, the Greek at that time was the international language. And so whenever you were a person of substance, an international person, you would speak Greek. It was the language of the time. There was the classical Greek and there was the Koine Greek. That is the Greek of the common man. And uh, just as you have classical English and you have dialect, well, you had the, 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 uh, the Greek of the common man, the Koine, and you had the classical Greek. Now, the Bible was written in the Greek of the common man. And that is really because God wanted the common people, everybody to get his word. He didn't do it exclusively up there. You remember a long time? And everybody say, look at all you, know where you come from. Your roots show in. But God gave his word in the language of the common man so we can all understand it. And so in the, in the Greek, there are many words that, uh, that uh, say children. And there are different ways to say children. I, I uh, used to teach a class at, at uh, the West Indian School of Theology and Communication. And one of the slides I have for that class, I always tell people, is when we're doing communication, there's the word eh -heh. And you know in Trinidad, eh -heh, there are 27 meanings for eh -heh. The same word, 27 meanings in the book. And you hear? Eh -huh. That means I didn't know that in truth. But if you walk outside and you see somebody who say they couldn't come to church, they say, eh -huh. <laughs> Means what? I catch you? <laughs> and so the same thing can mean different things. And so when we see a word, it is important that we understand the context, how it is written. Because just as we have one word can mean different things in our own English, so it is in, it was in the Greek. And so in scripture, when the Bible talks about children, the one that is used here is techna. And that means he's talking about not just little um, uh, infants or toddlers, but he's talking all the way up to teenagers. And this uh, word that was used, techna, for children really meant those who were still growing up or those who were dependent on their parents. And so the word uh, that is used is really about those persons until they reach uh, the level of maturity. When, as we say, you live in your parents' house, you're eating their food, then you you're there. But as long as there is this relationship between parent and child, the word is really coming to you. And so uh, God is speaking to these uh, children and he's saying to them that they must honor their parents. What are the, the, the instructions to them is, is important because while the apostle Paul I want you to see here, he's talking in Ephesians to children, and Paul doesn't just go to them and say, you know, um, could you, could you go? You're just going to be yaffing, yaffing, you know. You know how we do it? The little, little nothings. Um, no, but Paul deals with the children in very forthright matter, manner. And so Paul doesn't just wink and twinkle at them, but he now gives to them a command. As children, Paul says, for all of them, there is a command. And if we're going to take new ground, we need to follow God's command in our relationships. And so Paul says, first of all, that children are to obey their parents in the Lord. All children are to obey their parents. 
And Paul is saying this very universal. So it is regardless of the culture, the country, where you are, is not saying one set of children must do it and not the others. Christian children or not. No. All children across the board must obey their parents in the Lord. Now Paul is saying something that Jesus said that was way from the Old Testament. And it's being reinforced for all of us to see in terms of what God is saying. In the Old Testament, Leviticus 20 and 9, it says what? Anyone who curses his father, and who else? So it's not only the father, father and mother shall surely, you, you see what the Bible is saying? Shall surely be put to death. So serious it was in terms of how you treat your parents. It goes on to say in Proverbs, my son, listen to your father's instructions. And do not, for are you hearing me? And do not forsake your mother's teaching. This is what the scripture says, we're Bible people. My son, keep your father's commandments. I like that. We talk about God commandment. A commandment is something you just follow. And notice he didn't say, keep it if you like it. Uh, children, children. He didn't. I, I like before he talks about their instruction. Because an instruction is one thing. A commandment is another thing. And so he says we must be careful to heed the instruction of our parents, but also their commandments. Sister V, you have any commandments home by you? Huh? I'll, oh, ho. If you don't have commandments home, pressure. Keep your commandments. And, and, and this one always, always shakes me up when I, when I read this one. Underline it and I have it marked out. You must show it to your children all the time. Make sure they know this one. It says, the eye that mocks a father... And scorns to obey a mother, oh Jesus, will be picked out by the ravens of the... Hmm. You hear what God is saying? You understand the intensity of what he is saying? And the importance of what he is saying? God is saying, this is no simple thing. God is very firm on this. And Paul did not butter it up. He came out in a very emphatic, very emphatic commandment and order in the New Testament. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. He ain't set to go wrong, no set to talk. And how one, no, 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 no. Because this is serious business. He says, obey them in the Lord. And he says, that they ought to do it. The, the, the word obey here, when translated, the Greek word, it means listen under. Listen under. It means the child is supposed to listen to the voice, heed the voice of the parent, and actively respond to what they're hearing. Children, put up your hand. All the children. Yes. I see some man and woman's here. But listen, the Bible says, obedience, you see, in the home is the foundation for obedience anywhere. The kinds of stuff we see going on now is because in the home, they didn't follow obedience. And so now they have no respect for authority. They have no respect for teachers, for police, for, for you care. Because they've never learned it at home. The Bible says... That we must obey our parents. And I, and I love in terms of this, and, and because of time we're quickly going, but because of this, he doesn't, he adds, obey your parents in the Lord, and he goes on to talk about honor. And the reason he does that is because it's, it's sometimes for us, we can obey, but we do what is called malicious compliance. Yeah? We may obey, but we're giving them kuya mouth. You know? 
Kizzy, kizzy. You obey and they walk off and... Huh? You're doing what they're saying. They, they, you know, malicious compliance is when you intentionally do harm by following orders to the strict letter. So the parent says, um, go and water the plant. You're playing and call you from playing and say, go and water the plant. And you say, she say, water it. You take the biggest set of water, you flood it out. When she come, the plant float in. And you say, but you say, water. <laughs> huh? And so the Bible deals with that, which is why it says, obey and honor. Because what that is, the honoring now is about the attitude. How we obey. Because sometimes we say, well, I follow the, the scripture, I obey. But the attitude. And so the Bible talks about the word honor. Honor means to respect, to revere, to hold in high regard. And so the Bible says that the child's attitude to the voice of the parent is that they should obey, but they should do it with the right attitude. They should obey their parents with the right attitude. I was so, I was so touched last night in, in going over my stuff. I put on the, the news when it was finished. And what could I be greeted with? A man stabs his 60-year-old mother. Having an argument with her to start with. And out of upset, he stabs his six year old, 60 year old mother on the news. And the scripture is saying this is because children must honor their parents. Honor means you don't even quarrel back. Any, any amens? The Bible is saying that we should, as children, honor our our world is becoming inflicted with a lot of rude insensitive indisciplined people and it starts from the home because we're not teaching what the bible says and we're not doing what the bible says we're giving lip service and we think it's all right and notice the bible didn't say obey them if they're nice or if they're good Come on. Huh? You remember last time we talked about if you have a thief and wife, there's no reason to divorce. Keep your thief and wife and lock up everything. But similarly, the Bible says, if you have parents, come on, who are dishonorable? The Bible says them bad parents, don't take them on. The Bible says obey them in the Lord. It means anything that they're saying to you that is within the context of God's word and it is not illegal, you have to obey. Oh, God knows we have some horrible parents. We're coming to you. Not all of them nice. But you know the Bible doesn't, doesn't allow us because of that to do what you want. The Bible says that we need to be careful. This generation that seems to want to be, they know it all. And there is very little time to honor your parents. The Bible says we must honor them. Adult children are always, are, are sometimes found guilty of this, of honoring their parents. And while we understand when um, parents, your child gets married and go, the Bible gives marriage as the definer for separating and becoming a new person. And so we must be careful as parents when they marry. You could give advice, but you can't give orders. Huh? They are independent. And that's the difference between dependence and independence. Chancy? Leave the girl alone, eh? Give advice and stay out. Amen? Amen. You in church, that's what church is for. She ain't tell me nothing, eh? 
<laughs> but the scripture is saying we must keep out. Keep out. We give advice. But as children, we have the responsibility to honor our parents. The Bible says if you want things to be right with you, honor your parents. If you, if you want to honor them, God is going to bless you. You know, my mom, growing up, never had a home of her own. We never had our own home. And when I was, uh, I go to say small, and some people say, hey, you're big now? Well, yes. <laughs> when I was younger. <laughs> I used to say, you know, I will, I will get you a house when I get old and get you a car. And people would laugh and say, oh, God, he's so sweet. <laughs> but I understood the Bible says about honor because I got saved very young. And when I started working, the first thing on my mind was always to get a house. House was important. And when I got my first house I went to purchase, my mother was not working for money, enough money to put on and buy a house and sign things. But I went with that house when I bought that house and I put her name on the deed. Because I was saying to her, I honor you. I want to say to you that I have never been without. God has blessed my life in unspeakable ways because I honored my parents. I said to her, when I get, I'll get a car to drive you. And I thank God in her last days I was able to hire a driver to meet her every day, take her wherever she had to go. Honor her. You want to be blessed by God? Honor your parents. It's a scriptural formula for success. You who want to pass them straight and say all kinds of stuff, God has given the reason to honor. When we honor our parents, the Bible says, it will be well with you. This issue about talking against your parents, throwing up your mouth and your face, and well, you're no long ago, parents. It couldn't last too long. Because you might not have a face. But we have a kind of different generation now that allows it to continue. And I believe children have a voice. They must be able to speak and share, but we must not cross the line in disrespect. And we must learn from home how we honor our parents. The Bible says, honor them. Not because they say so. Because as I said, some of them are even worthy of it. But the Bible says we do it. You know why? He says, because it is right. Come on, church. He says we must do it because it is right. This is why the Bible says a child should honor the parents because it is right. Why I must do that? Because it is right. Because it's commanded by God and it is right. God promises that it will be well with you on the earth and you will do well. If you honor your parents. Once these parents are doing and saying things that are in the Lord. Let's go on. Because of time. Turn to somebody and say, you're talking to parents now. So in verse 4, that sister Messiah read, the Bible says, Fathers, do not, you know, I love my word, exasperate your children. Mm -hmm. Now it's interesting that the Bible says, and sometimes we, get, we go off on it because he says fathers. And so we think it's really fathers alone he's speaking to. 
And so maybe that is where we get the thing from. You know, long time. Wait till your father come home. I go tell your father and you, and when you hear that, shaking and trembling. Well, the Bible uses this phrase because in, in those days, again, we must understand context. Fathers were responsible for the family and for all discipline and training and instructions of children in the family. And so, the issue of that was saying to him, really, those who are responsible for that kind of thing. Because I tell you, if it was only so, you had to only do it to father as well. Lady Lee, where you go do? Lady Lee? Have, how much? It's four or five boys. Four boys. Can you imagine a woman with four boys and then a single mother? And you'll say, well, pressure for she. Mm. Uh -huh, well, visit the, visit the Lee home. Mm. Big man, tall man, strong man, policeman, all kind of man. But let me tell you, when Lady Lee talk, mm, little Lady Lee, how she just do it, I don't know, but all man. Mm. And so this instruction is not only to fathers. You women and mothers who want to say, well, you know, we're your father. Look, talk to your child like the father alone must be involved in discipline. That's unscriptural. You have a responsibility to train your child. You notice it in the Old Testament, I read where it started. I said, listen to what? Your father and what? And your mother. Instructions and teachings. And so, both parties, you are responsible, in fact, for training your children. God listed both of them. And so, God deals with parents now. And he says in verse 4, in terms of that relationship, parents, while children's responsibility is to obey and follow what is said, Children have a, our parents have a responsibility. And the parents' responsibility, he says, is to not have their children become so provoked that they will turn away from serving God. And as much as you want your children to obey and follow you as they should, honor you, you as parents, we have a responsibility before God for our children. The Bible says we must bring them up, bring them up in the training and instructions of the Lord. There are ways we can frustrate our children. We uh, won't go into all of them, but you can frustrate your children by being overprotective. Huh? Children can't thrive. They can't grow. Because you're hovering over them like a helicopter. Mm. The child can't see you away. Parents, we need to be careful. Mm. Because young people resent that kind of thing. My wife used to always be teaching me how to talk to young people. Because in her business, she deals with young people all the time. And she says, you know, young people don't like you to do that. You have to. I said, huh? Oh. So, yeah. Overprotective, playing favorites, parents. Mm -hmm. Mommy, nice child, but you, go in the back now. You, the Bible says, those are ways that you can frustrate your child. Unrealistic expectations. Children being, we need to push our children, but we need to be careful that we do not over uh, push them. Constant discouragement. You're no good. You're weak. You can't do it. Look at you. You can't make parents. We frustrate our children. You'll never amount to anything. God bless you, all those of you who were in the prayer meeting last night. Let's see the hands. I saw, I saw a few of you. Bless God. Yeah. Friday night, thank you. Friday. But on the prayer meeting, I heard... Um, Reverend McClutch is saying, you know, his father is to say, you're worthless. You're worthless. Father is telling your children that. Mm -hmm. Bible talks about that. Mm -hmm. 
labeling them as new sons. And we say to the children, they can't make. We're trying to mature some of them too quickly. Yeah? Things that should be left for adults, you want the children to do. And sometimes we're using what? Love as a punishment and ward. You know, that is something for children. You know, little children, you don't give them something and they say, I don't love you again. Huh? And they think they, they use love like that as a bargaining tool. But God help us, there are some parents who do it. And we turn love off and on of our, on our children and use it as a reward. Love must be unconditional for our children. When they're bad like yours, we must still love them. That's a place to say amen. If you can't say amen, say ouch. Love them still not is not easy. Huh? It's not easy. One time my son came home at school, got suspended. Oh gosh, I didn't to say it to shake me up. Mm -mm. When the boy bring the thing home, I, I think I'm nearly going to tailspin. Mm -mm. I said, say that word again. <laughs> so who? My son? So what? So what is the word? But you have to love them still. Huh? Even when things don't go as we plan, we love them and we deal with it. Because that is what God has called us to do. We need as parents to love our children. As parents, God has called us, in fact, to bring them up. To train them. We must ensure that what we do don't cause our children to go astray. God forbid some parents drinking and have the children drinking. God help us. God is going to hold you up. You know Jesus said? Jesus said it. He says, worse if they tie a millstone wrong and drown you in the sea than cause your children to go astray by your action. That is a severe responsibility on parents. Your action counts. We are supposed to enrich our children, the Bible says. We must help them to be all that they can be. Facilitate them, work with them. You know, I saw a study recently in the States, and it said, this is for American, it said an American father, when they checked, they did a survey, spends 3.7 seconds. A second, I read it again and again, seconds per day with their child. And I say, oh, God help us. God help us to spend time with our children. Sometimes it's difficult. God forgive us, but we need to make an effort. I remember when my, my children were younger and my daughter was going to school. At one time, oh, gosh, it hit me hard. When we, they're going to pick her up, and she says, I was supposed to pick her up that day. She said, oh, gosh. Don't let daddy come and pick me up now. Oh, God, please. And I said, hey, you're loving daddy. How are you going to say that? She said, mommy, you come now. You come now. And why do you think she's saying that? Because when was my turn to pick her up? School over 3 o'clock. And I in a meeting 5 o'clock. I said, hey, my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and the child sitting down in the school. Yeah, she and all the cleaners, his friend. The, the guard man, the everybody, because they... But when is the mother turn? If school finishing, three, oh gosh, two thirty she in front of the school gate. <laughs> God help us. And, and, and it's difficult at times, but we've got to make the effort to spend time. Now, when I do that at five, I'm reaching home later now, because when I pick you up at five, I make up. So we had to go for a drive, we had to go and talk, yeah, ice cream, spend money we have, we had to. <laughs> but yeah, because it's important that we spend time with our parents, as difficult as I, I know what it is, I'm not telling you pie in the sky, I've lived it. But we've got to make the effort to spend time with our children. 
All the busy thing we're doing, take some time off. Your children must be able, one rule I always had, every, and work wherever up to now, anything I'm doing and my children call, I am saying it. No meeting must be too serious that they can, I can't take the call. And my children knew, they ain't gonna just call me and work and say, how you going, boy? <laughs> but once I got a call, that was my commitment. That I would answer you wherever and whatever I am doing. We must have that kind of commitment with our children. Take time. Take time to educate our children. God has called us to do that. Do what we have to do. This is why the Bible keeps talking about instruction and teaching. Because it was a responsibility of the parents to ensure that it happened. And so parents need to ask that. They need to ensure that they encourage their children. You must be your, biggest, your child's biggest cheerleader. Supporting them. Encouraging them. Taking time to talk with them when you're thinking right. You sit down and as we say, talk some sense into them too. Because you, God is calling upon you to do that. Parents, you are also called to evangelize your children. The first gospel message your child must hear is from you. The first time the child must get the word of God clearly spelled out should be from you. You are the one that must take the time to tell your child about the word of God. Time has gone, so I want to close at this point. And I want to say to us in closing that God is calling upon us to take new ground. As the children of God, we have a responsibility. God help us that no person sitting in here, you will have homes and families that are broken and hurting. We've come into some situations and I know it's hard. But let it start with us as the people of God. I want to say and remind us in closing to you children that God loves you. And God loves you and he has a wonderful plan for your life. Your life is not by chance. You're here for a purpose. And I want to encourage you as you go on to obey your parents and to honor them. The parents, they love you and they want the best for you. If you are older and you've left home, you still have time to show honor to your parents. You have an opportunity to go and honor your parents in whatever way you can. Maybe they weren't the best. But you need to do your part. Parents, hug your children. Hug your children. God is calling on us as parents to show love. Look them in the eyes and say, I love you. My son is twice my size. But every time we meet, anytime he visits or we come and we talk, whenever he's leaving, we hug each other and we say, I love you. And that's important. They're not too big man, too little woman, too little child. They are yours. And let them know in very tangible ways that you love them. Hug them. Don't leave them to get hug only from the world and from the wild man and the pusher man. And the... No, it must, they must know love from you at home. They must know what a father's love is. What care and concern is. Every single time my daughter would call, we end the conversation with, I love you. I love you. Because that might be the last time we ever talk. And you must always leave knowing daddy loves you. And so parents, always be there for your children. 
There's a quote that says, children are not looking for perfect parents, but they are looking for honest parents. An honest parent is a highly infectious person. And for those of you who are here, and maybe you tried your best, and, and your children just didn't turn out the way you wanted or expected. Your children are not where you would like them to be. Let's just bring them before the Lord and take new ground and believe God to turn around and make a difference in their life. Don't give up on them. God is still able. Stop berating yourself or berating your children. Put it to God. And let us pray that God is going to do the work. Let's bow our heads. And if you're here today, you're a child, you're a parent, there's something more for each of us to do. I pray that we will take new ground in our relationships and that our lives will demonstrate what God says. If you're here today and you've never been saved and you don't have that relationship with Christ, it's a good place to start because with Christ, your relationships can be different. All the errors, and we know we're not perfect, people make a lot of mistakes, but don't stay in your mistakes. God can turn it around if you're willing to submit to him. Say, God, I want to be a good parent. I want to be a good child. I've made some mistakes. I've done some stuff that I shouldn't do, but God, help me today. God, I pray for all your people listening here in this house and online that God, today we will be obedient to your word in our relationships as, as children and as parents. We will take new ground, go to the higher place. We will see some relationships coming out of this as never before. People will go and ask forgiveness that lives will be mended, homes will be brought together in our weaknesses. Help us to be the people you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen.